Example number three, we're going to be evaluating a function. And uh, what I want to do real quick before we actually get into this example is come over here to the right where it says uh, function notation. Okay, uh, pretty much almost all of your math career, you've you're you're used to seeing things written like this, right? Like say if I give an equation, uh, y equals x plus one, right? Where uh, x, y are coordinate points, right? And we we think of x as your inputs, right? So if I input a value in for x, then y value what pops out is known as our output, right? So what we want to do is that we want to start to go away from this type of notation and we want to get into what we call function notation. And it just makes it a lot more sense. And let me explain what if what function notation is and why it makes more sense to use instead of using what we've been using. Okay, and that's the, the following. So another way of writing y is uh, we write f of x. Or maybe I write g of x. Or maybe I write h of x. This this letter f, g, or h has no significance. Okay, it doesn't mean it doesn't mean it doesn't stand for some it doesn't mean uh, some kind of name for an f or a g or, or an h. We just use f of some variable to show that now this is going to be our y value. So uh, what I mean is that if I were to rewrite this, maybe I would rewrite this in function notation like this. So basically, all I've done is I just replaced the y with f of x. And that's how you say this. You say f of x. And so now this becomes our output. So we have our x is our input, but then our output becomes f of x now. So see the correlation? They look very similar. And really, the only thing that really changes is just the y, right? So that changed, that changed, and now we used f of x, f of x, and then um, f of x. And if you're asking, well, why do we do this? What, what's the purpose of doing this? Well, the reason why that we want to do this is come, coming back up here. What if I said, hey, uh, so what happens if you plug in uh, like 1 in for x for this function right here? If I plug in 1, well, that means you've got to plug in 1, right? You do 1 plus 1, and then wouldn't the, the y value be 2, right? I mean, does that make sense? I plug in 1, 1 plus 1 is 2. So... What makes this a little more powerful and, and it makes a little more sense is I can say instead now, say if it's the same function right here, okay, I can do this um, instead now. I can do f of 1, meaning take my function, I'm going to plug in 1, and so now I don't have to say it on the side, say, okay, what happens if I plug in 1? This right here already tells me what happens when I plug in 1. What's my y value going to be? And so f of 1 would be equal to 2. So this right here is the same thing now as saying this now, you see. f of 1 equals 2 is the same thing as saying I plugged in 1 and out came 2. So this is the type of notation that we want to start using now. Uh, we want to get away from saying y equals and then some, some kind of graph. We're going to start using f of x, g of x, h of x. It doesn't matter what, what we use there. Okay, so a little bit of uh, knowledge there on function notation, all right? Let's come over here now, and we're going to let g of x equal negative x squared plus 4x plus 1, and we need to find g of 2, find g of t, and find g of x plus 2, okay? And again, all this means is this number that's inside of the parentheses. All this means, okay? Is that you take uh, you take whatever is inside the parentheses, and that's going to be your inputs. You're going to input this into the function. So, if we take our first one right here, a, we need to find g of two, g of two. That means this. That means wherever you see x, what am I going to plug in? I'm going to plug in two. So I'm, I'm going to plug in two right there. And we're going to plug in 2 right there. So I replaced all of the x's with 2. So let's do that. Negative, and then I have 2 squared plus 4 times 2 plus 1. Notice, I just rewrote the entire same function, but notice all of the x's 
just got replaced with 2. And so now this just becomes um, a, a computation now. 2 squared is 4. Put the minus sign in front of it. Plus 8 plus 1. Good. Negative 4 and 8 gives us a positive 4 plus 1. So that means our final answer here would be 5. So really the way that you would say this then at the end, okay, like your answer would be g of 2 is 5. You see that there? That's also saying the coordinate point to 5. See the correlation? I plugged in 2 and out came 5. I plugged in 2 and, and then when I plug in 2, I do all this work, out came 5. Okay? Uh, let's now do the next one. This is a three-part problem. Do g of t. So that means we replace all of the x values, replace them all with t now. Okay? So everything gets, gets replaced with a t. So negative t squared plus 4 times t plus 1. And there's nothing to simplify here. This would be the answer. This is it. You can't simplify t squared plus 4t plus 1. You can't combine anything. So that would be the answer for part B. Okay. And uh, let's go now and do part C now. Um, uh, part C, the last part, would be do g of x plus 2. Okay? So what this means now, again, is that we're going to replace all the x's with 2. So let me just write down uh, the, the function again here. So what? It was negative x squared plus 4x plus 1, right? So all of the x's, this x, this x, and, and this x, they, they're all going to get replaced with x plus 2. x plus 2 goes in there, it goes in here, and it goes in there. Okay? So we're going to replace them all now. So g of, I'm going to do it again right here. Oops. Um, get rid of that. So g of x plus 2 equals, again, replace x with x plus 2. So negative, and in parentheses, x plus 2 squared plus, it says right here, 4 times x, or 4 times, I replace x with x plus 2, and then plus 1, okay? Now, let's just uh, go ahead and simplify all this, and this is now going to review all of your, your algebra, okay? This right here means negative x plus 2 times x plus 2, right? This is going to have to, this is a binomial squared. I could go ahead and clean this up already. Do the distributive property, 4 times x is 4x, uh, 4 times 2 is plus 8, and then we have plus 1. Okay, so a lot of terms right now that we are combining together. Uh, if I were to expand all this using the FOIL method, I would get minus x squared plus 4x plus 4. Okay, so I kind of skipped doing the FOIL method. You can do that on your own, like on the side of your paper. So do the first, outside, inside, last, and then, and, and then you would get uh, that right there. And then I can already combine 8 and 1. So I'm going to do plus 4x plus 9. This is a really good problem because this is just reviewing. Can you multiply a binomial? Can you do the sure property? Now can you combine like terms? So really neat problem here. Uh, continuing on, let's do the, the distributive property. So it's negative x squared minus 4x, minus 4, and I'm going to bring this down, plus 4x, plus 9. And let's uh, combine some terms together. I see that x squared is by itself, right? There's nothing I can combine with x squared, so I'm just going to bring that down. Okay, so I'm going to just go ahead and give that a little cross out. I usually do that so I don't use it again. Uh, let's see, negative 4x and 4x, well, those just cross out, right? So those are gone. Negative 4x plus 4x, those are gone. And I get negative 4 plus 9. That's going to give me plus uh, 5. So my final answer then is this. So g of x plus 2 is equal to negative x squared plus 5.